it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. Today I am bringing you a video that I've been thinking about for a while now, um, and I've compiled a list of, I think, seven books that I have to recommend in this video, and that is some fantasy books for YA readers. I don't mean this to be like an introductory fantasy video. I already have one like that. There might be some overlap between that and this video, but really just some people who love reading YA and are wondering, are there any adult fantasy books out there for me? I'm not trying to convert you to read solely adult books, but I'm just giving you a sampling of some books that might interest you if you prefer to read YA. So yeah, I'm not bashing YA. I'm not trying to convert you at all. I'm just giving you an example and um, a sampling of some adult books that maybe you would enjoy. Okay, let's just get this author out of the way first and foremost. This is Warbreaker, written by Brandon Sanderson. I'm choosing to recommend Warbreaker to YA readers because I feel like a lot of people have been recommended Mistborn Trilogy, which is phenomenal, great. I also recommend that. But I think if like you want to get a really good sampling of who Brandon Sanderson is an, as an adult fantasy author, definitely check out Warbreaker. This follows two different sisters, they're both princesses, um, in this world where the older sister has been primed her whole life to marry this god king in the neighboring country to broker um, and continue this peace treaty between the two continent, between the two countries. Things don't actually go according to her plan because her father ends up switching things up and sending her younger sister in her stead. So her younger sister, who was not prepared for this kind of life, who was not prepared for this sort of political maneuvering, ends up getting thrust into a really powerful position and doesn't know why, doesn't know where she is, doesn't know who she's dealing with, and it's fraught with political intrigue, it's fraught with a lot of action, really great family dynamics, and a lot of cool characters with mysterious backstories, which is always something that I appreciate. To top it all off, this book is a standalone. It may continue on with uh, another book added onto it, but for now it's a standalone. So if you're looking for something to try Brandon Sanderson out that is just a one and done kind of deal before you commit to his whole world, try out Warbreaker. I really, really enjoyed this. This next book that I have to recommend for you is Foundry Side, written by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is book number one of the Founder series. I actually did read this earlier this year as a judge for the BookTube SFF Awards. This book gets compared a lot to Brandon Sanderson's kind of novels. So again, if you've already read some Brandon Sanderson and are looking for something else to continue on with your adult fantasy reading, um, but really enjoy those com the complexity of his magic systems, really enjoy the kind of fun action characters that you get, I think Foundry Sign could be a good pick for you. So this follows a young woman named Sancha who uh, grows up in this like really, really desolate part of the city. There are these rich merchant houses that control different parts of the city and then for lack of a better word there's all these slums in between there where people like uh, Sancha have grown up. They're not allowed access to these different parts of the merchant guilds um, and the reason why these merchant houses have so much power is because they hold this magical technology called scribing. When they hold the key to these scribing objects um, they control so much. They control the trade. They're able to um, scribe their houses so it's like complete security. They're able to scribe like a horse-drawn carriage so it can just pull itself um, and all of those sorts of things. So they, these merchant guilds and these merchant houses hold the technology of these scribing secrets very, very dear. But Sancha is a thief and she's willing to make a ton of sacrifices to even and level her playing field. She has a great motley group of cast of characters that she runs around with. Again, really exciting, cool magic system, cool type of setting that I think that you would really enjoy it. So again, this would be for someone who's like, I've already tried out some Brandon Sanderson and I'm hooked. Now I want to try um, something else that's in the adult fantasy genre, so I think Foundry Side could be a really good pick for you. The next book that I have to mention, and this trilogy, this book has gotten a lot of praise on BookTube, um, so if you haven't already started this, this is just another reminder that you should definitely pick up Red Sister written by Mark Lawrence. This is book number one of the Book of the Ancestor trilogy. Um, I've read a couple of different Mark Lawrence books, and this trilogy is by far my favorite of anything that he's ever come out with. This follows a young woman named Nona Gray. We follow her from very young childhood up into, um, I'd say young womanhood, maybe in her 20s. In this book, we follow her from when she's a very young child to maybe about the age of 11 to 14. 
So at the beginning of this story, she is um, condemned to hang by Hangman's Noose for a crime that we're not sure if she committed, but the Abbess of Sweet Mercy has decided to pardon her and decided to come for her and bring her back to her convent um, to train her up. And what happens in this convent is that they are training to be magical assassin nuns. There are four different tribes of magical people, um, and she suspects that Nona has some of this magic within her and wants to train her and wants to bring her back. Um, and the events take off from there. Don't let the fact that they're young characters lull you into a sense of like false security because dark and gritty things do and can happen in this world and they do happen to Nona Gray. I would say if you are a fan of the Nevernight series that's what I would say a lot of people find that crossover between the two um, just because it's these like young uh, this young female training to be an assassin. Um, but I would say since I've read Nevernight and I've read this whole trilogy, the type of assassin wielding power and magic is very different between the two. So even though it sounds pretty similar, you're still gonna get like two completely different stories, even though it sounds like it's two young women going through this assassin training. You'll also like it if you like the school setting because um, that's a very familiar and homey place for a lot of fantasy readers. Yes, so I just wanna say, even though I am recommending this, don't uh, be into that false sense of security because this is a grim dark book there are some grim dark things that do happen in here all right this book i recently read i recently talked about it in my um fall reading wrap up this is mage's blood written by david hare this is book number one of the moontide quartet um i'm recommending this to ya readers because it follows a great group of young characters um it's takes place in these two different continents um this eastern versus western continental divide of euros and Antiopia, and every 12 years an event called the Moontide happens where there's a bridge between the two continents and at Moontide the tides are low enough in the water that this bridge stays above water the whole time and these two continents clash and go to war with one another. We follow a number of different characters and all of the family members and all of the people that surround them as they lead up to the events of the Moontide. So this takes place one year before the Moontide and we're building and we're building and we're building. I found this book to be so fascinating because at first I thought it was going to be about just like East meets West and that's all there is to it. But when you dig deeper, you see that there's a lot of different prejudices against one another on each of their own continents that they have to deal with before even getting to the moon tide. There's some romance in here. There's um, some action in here. There's some, there's a little bit of like po politics, but it's not at the main forefront because these current characters are not totally the people at the table making all these choices for what's about to happen in their life. And that's why I also like it. It's just these young characters being thrust into these really great um, situations that are out of their control. There's a little bit of a magical school setting, but there's mostly a desert fantasy setting, which I wasn't anticipating. So I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that this could be comparable to. It says Game of Thrones on here. So I think if you were interested in Game of Thrones, but you're like, I could never read that, but you are interested in that kind of scope of character, I felt this was like a lot more palatable. But I'm just saying that like, if you're looking for something that could be a bridge to Game of Thrones, maybe. Maybe this could be it. Um, but yeah, if you like desert fantasy, if you like young characters taking control of their destiny and that sort of thing, then I think you'll really like Mage's Blood. Another book that is no stranger to this channel, this is Theft of Swords written by Michael J. Sullivan. This is book number one of the Ryeria uh, Revelations. This book follows uh, two thieves for hire, Royce and Hadrian. It's a very, very easy trilogy to fall in love with, get involved with, um, because it's just got a lot of action. It's got a lot of humor. It's very very, very funny. I found Royce and Hadrian to be um, just one of the best like duos on page. So in this book, they are tasked and hired to steal this sword, but them going down this path and trying to steal this sword, they've been framed for the murder of a king and then events take off from there. Um, and this trilogy, I think, just gets more epic and epic as it goes on. Um, it does actually have two books bound up in here. Watch that interview with Daniel Green. It was a really great interview. Um, I've said this for a number of years that Michael J. Sullivan is like extremely accessible to his fans. I have a whole video on how to read all of his books. Yeah, but I've been saying this for years that Michael J. Sullivan is super accessible to his fans. Um, and th the way that he writes is 
just tailor-made for people looking to have a really good time with a good fantasy epic. And you had to know I was going to put some Robin Hobb in here. So this is Assassin's Apprentice written by Robin Hobb. Um, this is book number one of the Farseer trilogy, book number one of the entire Realm of the Elderlings. You saw me haul this. This is actually the 25th anniversary illustrated edition that I just purchased. Um, I had to have it. It's so beautiful. But aside from that, aside from me fangirling, I'm recommending this to YA readers because this is just a really good trilogy that that has like all the beats that I appreciate in classic epic fantasy, but we follow through the eyes of one character and that's Fitz Chivalry Farseer. He is a young orphaned boy when we first meet him and he is the bastard of the king-in-waiting Prince Chivalry. Because Prince Chivalry fathered a bastard, he is so um, ashamed of himself that he actually self-abdicates his place in line for the throne and leaves the kingdom and leaves Fitz Chivalry in the care of his, um, I guess, his man-in-waiting named Burrich, who is also the stable master. Fitz Chivalry grows up in the shadow of the castle. He grows up in the, in the castle and becomes um, a key player for this family. You've got at least one of his uncles trying to screw him over. You have people who don't believe he should be running around the castle because he is a bastard. Um, but the, the king, at least one prince, um, and some other interesting characters are always in Fitz Chivalry's corner. There are two different kinds of magic in here. There's the wit magic and the skill magic. Fitz Chivalry Farseer finds himself to be in power uh, in possession of both magics, and that's actually quite a big problem. I could go on and on about this series. As a matter of fact, I have before. I have another video talking about how to read Robin Hobb, and I have a whole Robin Hobb playlist. So I think I've said all I need to say at this point about Assassin's Apprentice, but again, I'm going to recommend it to YA readers because I think this is a really good introduction to a great story. I like the fact that it's told in one person's perspective because if you can get a little lost with all these multi POV stories this one will bring you back to like one solid central story and one solid central character and how the events of his life happen to and around him. Um, so love it. Assassin's Apprentice written by Robin Hobb. All right, so I hope this video was useful for you. I've been, again, thinking about it for a while, thinking about my list of books that I wanted to recommend this time around for YA readers. Um, and let me know if there's any books that you think I missed. Feel free to put them in the comment section below. Otherwise, you can follow me on my social media if you want. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. It's at WhatCastRad. Same as this channel, so it's super easy to find. And of course, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Later.